only me, Mrs. Walker, home from the city. What time is it? Uh, oh, well, I'm not sure to the minute, but it must be nearly half past twelve. Half past? It can't be. It mustn't be. Well, I'm afraid it is. I know I walked rather briskly from the studio, trying to outdistance Mrs. Ogden's Don't tongue, mention actually. that woman's name to me. I gather she spent the morning at the doctor's. Apparently she's convinced she's caught Stanley's bad back. Yes, well, anything is possible with the Ogden's, except consideration for others. Well, can I do that? Yes, love, if you would, please. And look, dear, would you put that away for me? And the casserole's in the oven. Now, there needs to be for about five minutes, the apple pie's ten minutes, and perhaps you'd better put this on, and I'll just go and tidy myself up. Oh, yes. Oh. Has the wandering boy arrived yet? No, but I'm assured he's imminent. Well? Well, what, Lucille? Where's my dinner? Oh, I've no instructions about serving it, just about taking it out of the oven. Well, I'm starving, and what's more important, I'm in early. Oh, an assignation of shopping. I do have other interests, you know, besides clothes and fellas. Such as? Food. Oh, all right. Well, I'm told it's a casserole. I don't care if it's an old clog just as long as I get it. It'll be uh, interesting living in this house, won't it, with Billy coming back? Really? Well, him and me Auntie Annie don't get on. Circumstances have changed, Lucille. But people don't, do they? People don't allow them to, Lucille. Your lunch... She hasn't got a clue why he's coming, or so she says. Well, he's not getting any younger, is he? Maybe he's decided he wants a few home comforts in his old age. <laughs> I say, I wouldn't mind a drop of rum when you two finish gassing, that is. But don't let me disturb you. I can wait all day. Well, if it isn't, Mr. Tatlock. Do you know I can only see your cap from where <laughs> I'm standing? <laughs> well, I'll say one thing about this pub these days. Oh, what's that? Too many clever dick women in it. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry if I offended you. Yes, well, a fella can only take so much insults, you know. Oh, shut up, Albert. How long have insults worried you? Now, look, I'm warning you, man. I've often wondered. And if you want my opinion why Billy Walker's come back again, I'll... There's been a lot of insinuations, you know. I'd like to guess at one of them. He sniffed for a bit of money, you know. Jack Walker's will. Oh, I don't know. I have lived round here a long time, Betty. I suppose there could be a bit of truth in it. Money is a powerful magnet, you know. Look, do you want my opinion? Are you interested? Because if not, just say so. Oh, we are. Only because we have to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, I reckon young Billy's back because he's got some woman in the family way. I'd be obliged if you would drink up and leave, Mr. Tatlock. Oh, what for? I've said no the worst of other four. No, but the difference is I happen to hear you say it out. All right, well, I was just going. Like I said, too many clever dick women in this pub. <laughs> you did quite right there, Mrs. Walker. I mean, it was a terrible thing that he just said. Yes, well, there are a lot of empty unwashed glasses around, Mrs. Turpin. I'm sorry, lover. I've been rushed off my feet. Annie, Albert's not the only one who's jumped to conclusions, you know. Look, then, I've not stood behind this bar for all these years without learning that my customers look on my business and my life as their common property. We do sup your ale, though. Yes, well, I'd prefer a bit of privacy. Len, why do you think Billy's coming home? I've no idea, love. Neither have I, really. And I'm worried. Look, Senator, it's my last word on the subject. It's just a matter of consideration for others. I'm fed up to death of you coming in at all hours of the night, banging doors, front door, back door, fridge door, flushing lavatories, leaving lights burning. I need my beauty sleep if you don't, all right? All right. And another thing. Oh, I knew there'd be another thing. When you come in at night and you've finished, wash up after you. Alan doesn't like to come down in the morning to a sink full oh, of greasy he's pots. He's very sensitive, suddenly, isn't he? Well, he is about things like that, and so am I, come to think about it. You must it. have changed, then. Meaning? According to me, Mum, you were never very house-proud. I said it was the last word on the subject, and I mean it. If you want to go night owling, go somewhere else. I'm going to the pictures tonight. Is that allowed? That's all right, if you don't come in with the milk. Oh, you wouldn't want me to clock in, would you? I'm getting a bit tired of these black looks I get getting from your lodger. Ah, so am I. You could pack her off to her mother, Elsie. Yes, that's what I've been trying to do for the umpteenth time. Well, why don't you do it? Well, maybe I remember my young days. You must have a hell of a memory. <gasps> well, I know what I tell her to do. Well, it's easy for you to talk. Elsie might throw me out, then I'd have to go back to my mum's. Our mother used to throw Betty and me out once a week at least. What for? 
Oh, for doing things like telling the teacher we couldn't go to school because we had no shoes. Ah, <laughs> oh, but Dad always used to let us in again. Oh, well, there's only Alan Howard at number 11, and he's on Elsie's side. Well, does that mean you're not coming to the party tonight, then? Well, how can I? It'll be a good do. Hey, won't it, Beth? Hey? The party tonight would be a good do. Well, I'm banking on it, kid, because last good night I had out were in 1965. Ah, oh, my last were long before that. You could always say you were going to the pictures or something. I already have done. Well, what are you worried about then? I just don't like telling lies. <sighs> See ya. Well, I'm coming in if she's not. Look, I'm not breaking your arms either of you. I can't stand competition these days, even from somebody as ugly as you. Same for you in knobs up. <laughs> hey! You forgot to buy something. Oh, I haven't forgot. I'm going to Greenwoods. Tell your lodger to be civil to your customers. Hey! I'll tell all fellas at that party you've got mumps. <laughs> Irma reckons she can manage a bit of tin rice pudding, Maggie. Oh, good. Ah, tell me a bit better, is it? Well, she says so. She's still feeling a bit green. Ah. Hey! I said rice pudding, love, not celery. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I'm in a dream today. I keep giving the wrong change this morning. It's a good thing most of my customers are honest. Maggie? Yeah? I thought you said you weren't worrying about that ex-husband. But he isn't ex yet, Bet, is he? No, but he might as well be. I wonder. Oh, Betty, have uh, half a better, please. Hi, Stanley. How's the darts yeah. going? Getting any better? Not so bad. Oh, and uh, pie, too, please, Betty. You know, I've done the full tin soup gamut this week. <laughs> About working. Oh, uh, yeah, for my sins. You must be raking it in. Oh, I am, Stanley, I am. It's just uh, just my digestion that's suffering. <laughs> I'd say you were putting on weight on all, Ken Barlow. Billy Walker. How are you, then? In the pink. All right. How are you, Mr. Ogden? Still supporting the place, I see. Ah, uh, well, the Palmer River Pound has up to you, son. I'll be living like a flipping playboy. I always thought you did live like a playboy, Stanley. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Betty. You've not met Annie Walker's prodigal son, have you? Betty Turpin, Billy Walker. Oh, I'm very pleased to meet you, love. Your mum's been expecting you all morning. Shall I go and tell you here? Oh, no, don't bother, Mrs. Uh, Turpin. I'll surprise her. People, Miss Nugent, are the most unreliable species in this world. Oh, I'm sure Billy must have suffered some sort of transport hold up a traffic jam or something. He is coming by train. A rail jam, then? You know, I can almost place it to the day when I first realised that Billy and I were on different wavelengths. I asked him where he'd been one evening and he said, out. Now, he wasn't meaning to be cheeky. As far as he was concerned, out was a perfectly adequate explanation. <laughs> Because his sister Joni, on the other hand, has never let me down. She's punctual, confiding, considerate. And a bigger flipping natural than her mother is. Billy! You were eavesdropping, that's not fair. Oh, yeah, the truth about yourself like that, love along, Miss Nugent. Hello, Billy. Are you expecting any lunch? Because you're almost two hours late for it. Oh, I'm sure I could revive the casserole, Mrs Walker, and there, there is some apple pie left. Yes, well, if there's any reviving to be done, I'll do it, Miss Nugent. Oh, it would be no trouble. It's my half day. Thank you, Miss Nugent. Oh, yes, well, I suppose our paths will be crossing more than somewhat. Oh, I do hope so, Miss Nugent. Yes, uh, au revoir, as the French say, in uh, these circumstances. Au revoir. You know, I wish all females reacted to me like her. It does me ego a power of good. Yes, well, Miss Nugent reacts like that to any male past the age of puberty. Good old mum. One to the solar plexus for I've even got me coat off. I've been keeping me all fruit. All right, love. Lovely to see you. Well, any chance of getting some of that stew? If you mean the casserole, very possibly. Well, I was keeping you then. Why are you here, Billy? Oh, don't worry, Mum. I'm not in any trouble. I haven't married a hottentot or anything like that. Well, then why? <laughs> this is my own mother. Oh, don't be silly, love. It's not been your home for years. Well, perhaps it should be now. Billy? Yes? I can manage on my own, you know. Of course you can. None better. I don't expect any sacrifices from you. I'm not making sacrifices. What about your career? Career? Do you mean that garage job in London? Well, I've been thinking about chucking that up for a long time. Have you? Yeah, finished yesterday. What do you propose to do for a living? Working for myself. For yourself, love? Where? Well, anywhere around here. I'm thinking of getting a little business. Oh. And you'd better get me some dinner so I can start getting used to your cooking again. Coming up, love. Mum? 
My word, you've got yourself up, haven't you, considering you're only going to the pictures. Have I? You know you have. I can whiff you from here. See you, then. See you. Oh, by the way, I might be just a bit late. Why? Well, we might just get talking or something. Who might? Me and Lucille. Anyone else we meet. Well, bring him back here. I don't mind that at all. Though what Alan's going to say to sharing his hot milk with a lot of gossiping women, I don't know. Oh, I don't think he'd like it. Not go and see Les. Can I learn? Of course you can. I couldn't. You know, I mean, no one's holding your arm, Les. Well, supposing he's as badly as his brother says he is. Or only half as bad. Maggie. Yeah. You're talking round in circles again. You'll go. It's your nature. No, I won't. Well, well, not unless I get another SOS from his brother. You know, I, I thought I were rid of Les. Really rid. You'll just have to keep your fingers crossed, hoping he gets better. They've been crossed for days. And here's another permanent fixture. How do, Len? I'm doing all right, mate. Getting me share, as they say, and you? He's bursting with plans, Len. Big plans. No, Mother, don't exaggerate. I'm not exaggerating. You've got plans, why make a secret of it? You know, we heard that the police was after you. Oh, the mafia, actually. Why is it when grown men get together that they switch to childish batter? It's true, Mrs. Walker, they do. Yeah. I intend to tell the world that you have plans. So there. And is she exaggerating? Well, you know my mother better than I do, then. I, um, I think he's being cagey, then. What do I? Well, to be honest, I do have one or two ideas. Yeah. What about? I was setting up in business. Garage business? Oh, that's my job. Round here. But why should everybody be so surprised that I might like coming back? Because we had you taped as a flip in London, mate. Yeah, well, that's the point. I'm not, I never ever will be. So I thought if I'm going to set up in business, I might as well set up with people that I know and like. Hey, I've just had a thought. Alan Howard. Who? Alan Howard, Elsie Tanner's new husband. Well, he's in the garage business. He was in the garage business. Well, he... He might be able to give Billy some advice. Oh, it's always useful. I'll give you a nod next time he comes in. But we'll take everything he says with a pinch of salt. He's a bit of a... <laughs> Romantic? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a white boy, remember? I come from the smoke. Oh, uh, what you can have? Now, didn't I say that things had start looking up as soon as Billy Walker stepped on the scene? Oh, your very words. <laughs> <laughs> If she could, you know, Irene, you know how she likes a good time. Gee, don't we all, love? Anyway, this is Lucille Hewitt, Hello. and this is little Sandra Butler. Hello. Hey, you don't mind them coming, do you, kid? Do I, eh? More the merrier, so long as you keep your eyes off me, fella. Mm -hmm. Oh, which one is your husband? You must be joking. He's in Glasgow singing his lorry to sleep. Help yourselves to drink. It's through there. And, uh, circulate, you know. Looks like you're going to be all right then. Yeah, well, it's time it looked changed. Who is he? His name's Frank Bradley. Not bad. Hey, that mate of his with a moustache is going free. <laughs> no wonder. I think I'll go home. You've only just got here. I feel out of place. Oh, you'll be all right when you've had a few drinks. Soon when I get sick. Hey, up. The patter and his friends coming over. I'll do. How's yourself? Oh, we're all right, aren't we, Frank? <laughs> well, who's your mate then? the other night in the ship hotel. You don't remember though, because I was with her. And well, what's your name, Smiley? Uh, Sandra Butler. I've already told them who you two were. It was like uh, a condition of entry. Hey, that was very funny, wasn't it, Frank? Hands are hard. Yeah, that's right. You live around there, way? I've been doing recently, yeah. <laughs> you know a fella by the name of Langton, then? Oh, she's only engaged to him, that's all. Oh, he's a big mate of ours, is Ray Langton. Isn't that right, Frank? We know him. Well, let's... Uh, Get to sorted out now. Now we know who we are and who we know. I'd like to dance. It's natural. You took the words out of me now. Come on. Hey, I go bundle on this tune as well. Yeah? I'll say one thing for Lantern. What? I like his taste in women. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Tatlock, but it's more than my job's worth to serve you. I mean, Mrs. Walker's banned you. But, but I'm with him. I'm his guest. So that's it. I'm walking amiably along, trying to find excuses for people who dump food in the sea, when he virtually strong arms me in here and said, Do your good, Kenneth. You don't get out enough. I ought to have a drink more. And what you really want is my protection. Look, you'd save everybody a lot of trouble if you just left the pub nice and quietly. Go to the flying horse truck, the brew's the same. I can't. Why not? Well, I don't get on with the landlady there either. Which seems to prove so. Look, give him a drink, will you? Otherwise, I'll withdraw my customer, and he says, out. Well? Oh, go on then. I tell her I didn't notice it was you. Ah, well, I'll have a drop of rum. But as I'm his guest, he's paid. Mine's gone empty too. Oh, my goodness, it's me who needs protecting. <laughs> Is that him? Yeah, that's that's Stella. Yeah. Hello, Billy. I saw the flags out and I thought you must be ill. Oh, well, see, well, marriage certainly seems to be doing you good. What marriage, love? It's sitting at home at night. So this is the fellow I sit and look at. Alan, Billy Walker. Alan, Billy. Billy's been waiting to meet you. Oh, and I don't owe him any money. No. If anybody says anything, I'll thump him. No, I just want uh, your advice on a little scheme I've got in mind. Well, yes, by all means. Uh, could we... Uh... Sure, yes. Well, go on, tell me to get him in. Well, get him in. Dave Smith never spoke to me like that. No, me neither. Ah, but uh, Alan's got sex appeal. You should have seen me and me sailor that. <laughs> so I thought, why? You work for somebody else filling their wallet when you could be working filling your own. Well, that's a thought that's launched a thousand schemes. It's also launched a thousand downfalls. What went wrong with your garage? Well, nothing. It's still a very successful garage. It's just that... Uh, well, I had too many other irons in the fire, and the fire got cold. I, um, I overextended. Have you thought of starting up in the south? Oh, yes, but it's just a feeling I've got, you know, mm -hmm. folk up here are much nicer to deal with. Well, that's either imagination or sentiment. Maybe, but it's still comforting. Well, how can I advise you? I thought you might know if there's any garages on the market. How big? Minute. Well, my garage is for sale. How big's that? It's a two-man operation that's specialising mainly in high-performance stuff. Sounds interesting. Well, I'll show you if you'd like to see it. Name the day. Well, tomorrow. Right, great. Okay. There you are, lads. What's up, you? I'll get these. Oh, no, he says it. Uh, don't look now, but mine hostess has just appeared. And she's scowling, too. Oh, uh, don't forget it's you lot that made me serve him. <laughs> yeah, well, any rate, if she tries to chuck me out this time, I'm not going. Oh. I've done now. I won't budge. Pardon, Mr. Tadlock? I say I won't budge. An Englishman's pub's his castle. Oh, may Charlie Dickens forgive you. I quite agree, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, by the way, Mr. Tadlock, well, my Billy is quite free from any extramarital encumbrances. Quite free. Yeah. Mrs. Walker can summon a very neat turn of phrase when it suits her. <laughs> well, it's like I said, there's too many clever dick women in this pub. Yep. And folk discussing business, are they? Don't ask me, Mrs. Walker. All I've been doing all night is get him in. <laughs> you know, my Billy is probably explaining to Alan where he went wrong and where Billy <laughs> intends to go right. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> By the way, Sandra and Lucille are seeing a lot of each other these days. Yes, they are. Babysitting tonight, I believe. You what? Well, babysitting for a friend, according to Lucille. Well, according to my Miss Butler, they've gone to the pictures. If that clammy paw moves another inch, I'll screw your toes down with me eel. Oh, I only want to hold your hands. Now, I don't want you getting overexcited. You don't like me much, do you? Well, it's not you, you see. It's your personality. It's not much of a party, is it? There aren't enough fellas. You can't call that thing up there a fella. It's all right for some. I thought you felt such a friend. I think I do. Think? Well, I've only said about ten words to him, kid. Fellas, go for some. So it seems. She's attractive. Yeah, but she can be a bit wet. I do have me following. I wish I did. Our infant rescue, eh? I found these two for you. Boozing by themselves in the kitchen they were. Never. Colin, Harry, Ben, Lucille. I'll, uh, I'll leave you to get on with it then. Thanks very much. Do you dance? No, don't say you do. Yeah. 
Next time, keep your mouth shut. It's just not our night, is it? Hey, hmm? all this exercise is making me thirsty. Booze is all you think about. I wouldn't say that. Come on, let's have a rest. Lads can never dance as long as girls. That's boring. You're no gentleman, are you? You don't want me sitting on your lap, do you? Hey, is that right? You were engaged to Langton. Right enough. And why'd you split up? Reasons. Come on, I'm no fan of his. He's not bad. You don't say much, do you? Not if it doesn't suit me, no. What do you do for a living? I'm a hairdresser. You like it? So-so. Well, why not chuck it then? And do what instead? What you fancy? Easier said than done. I don't know. I do what I fancy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's good. We always do what we fancy. Like what? No, well, this week we're doing a driving job. Gets us all over the country. I suppose it does. I wouldn't mind going away somewhere, getting out for a bit. There's nothing stopping you. Oh, it's not that easy for a girl. I think you're making excuses. Oh, I'm not. I have been getting fed up lately. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Everybody's getting at me at home, at work. I can't see any end to it, really. I still say you're not serious. About what? Going away somewhere. Oh, I am. Only reason I'm here tonight is because I told a lie. You know where we're off to six o'clock tomorrow morning? Where? London. I won't be back for a while. What's that got to do with me? Come on, love, you can't be that simple. I could come with you. Travel free. Are you enjoying yourself? I said, are you enjoying yourself? Well, love. Yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs>